Welcome back to another episode of Lost in the Farmer's Market Garden Shorts. Today's topic is this staggeringly bright plant in front of you, and no, not the big leafy one. This one, with the lilac -y blue flowers. This plant is, has a bunch of common names. Anise hyssop, giant hyssop, hummingbird mint, or as I prefer to call it to break down the confusion, Agastache. Its scientific name is Agastache phoeniculum. Variety is Golden Jubilee, and it's named that for its impeccable chartreuse foliage. And look at those flowers. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Look at that. That is so lilac-y blue that, quite frankly, I think actual lilacs would hate this plant violently. Now, the name Agastache comes from two separate Greek words. Aga, meaning aga, which is the first part in the shorthand, very much, and stache, ear of grain, referring to the shape of the flowers which look like a ear of grain or like a spent corn cob or something like that. Or wheat, better yet, with the kernels removed. Phoeniculum is a word referring, is a Greek word referring to hay. I'm guessing on this case that either it, the original varieties as found were roughly the color of hay or came up when, or in bloom when the hay was harvested or something like that. Despite all this, it is native to the United States with an exception for a variety that is native elsewhere. Hummingbird mints are, uh, actually a pretty hardy deciduous perennial. This one is kind of skinny because the one that was here was transplanted into the bed last year and did not survive the winter, unfortunately. There's not much I can do about that, so I simply replaced the plant, assuming that I did something wrong. What makes them useful is obviously they, they're in the mint family. Ultimately, they produce copious amounts of nectar. The pollinators love them. This uh, chartreuse color can be seen at night. It's, it's still reflecting that much illumination. Now, in a medicinal angle, and I do recommend you consult your doctor or a reputable source before you start trying to self-diagnose and or treat major ailments with herbal stuff, it is said to be a cold alleviating sort of remedy as a tea, the leaves specifically. The flowers have been said to be... <clears throat> the flowers go in salads, though personally I've never tried this because I leave them on the plant. Um, you can use it as a cardiac tonic to strengthen a weak heart. It has antiviral oil that come off the leaves, and it's useful versus herpes 1 and 2. Uh, I, again, before you start dunking your junk in your Agastache, talk to a doctor. Really, just just do that. Um, a poultice of it will help treat burns. I have never tried this. Again, I have no idea how effective that is. Now, what's interesting is that it's rich in polyphenol antioxidants. However, in recent research, excessive amounts of, of antioxidant countering compounds may not be good for you, so I would be careful with that one too. As a garden perennial, it's going to have a roughly V shape, it's going to be upright, it's going to be bushy, it's going to be the brightest foliage around because it's really hard to compare. It takes full sun, it does need some irrigation, some fertilizer, a decent soil. Since it's a native, it will adapt to a lot and it will tolerate a lot of your mistakes, which is wonderful. Um, again, this variety is Golden Jubilee and normally this plant is usually a more medium colored green than this. This one's just expressive. In the uh, test gardens, I have a rule. I don't like it if it only does one thing. Well, this thing does two things. It has great foliage and flowers and it's medicinal. So, I mean, it's three for the price of one. You can't blame me there. Now, you could have it in your garden as a bright focal point to draw the eye towards something so that you can focus on an area having it in the corners next to nighttime track lighting so it its outrageous foliage illuminates the garden even after the sun's gone down could be a use. 
as far as neighbors, you can see that it's a good neighbor to these foxgloves, which I will cover in a later video because foxgloves have a funny history. Or that angel's trumpet in the back, which is Brugmansia. And there's a whole story behind angels versus devil's trumpets. We'll get to that one later, too. Now, uh, there are many varieties of Agastachi. Different shaped leaves, different shape, different colored flowers. Um, last year I was selling one called Bolero, which had sort of magenta pink flowers and little triangular heart-shaped leaves. I mean, not as big as these, like half the size. There's an Agastachi for your color preference. I don't, the only thing I have, don't think I've seen is pure white flowers. But um, at the rate breeders are making stuff, who knows? Now, I think that covers everything about Agastachi that you did or did not want to know. Please, uh, if you have any comments, put them down in the comments section. Like, subscribe, hit up the blog. And as always, folks, keep them growing.